Some of the things, so particularly what we're going to be talking today are just about the model. So going back to this previous slide here, um, let me go back here to this previous slide. We're just going to be talking about what it takes to work with this inventor library. Okay. What does it take here? What do we need to do to take into consideration our IPTs and our IAMs and our, and our IDWs or DWGs typically? But let's just focus on the actual models right yet. So one of the first questions that you need to ask yourself when working and developing your models, particularly if you want to start using them with um, a configurator or some sort of configuration process, is are the models static or are they dynamic? Because there's two different paths that you must follow depending on what kind of model it's going to be. If it's a static file, this is typically something that's never going to change and they're very, very easy to maintain simply because once you have that model developed, very rarely will it ever change. Now, now when I say never change or very rarely change, typically what I'm talking about is the, the actual geometry itself. You're not going to be going in there. You're not going to be editing it too much. Maybe its file name might change. Maybe the location in which it's stored might change, but typically the file itself may not change. Now, a good example of things that are going to be static are those types of files that you typically don't have design control over. Now, what are those? Uh, you're talking about fasteners or uh, purchased components, things that you purchase or get from a vendor that you don't have design control over. You consume it, you use it within your design, but you don't typically develop it. Okay, so that's a, that's a good example of those files that might be static. Now, you may have static files that you, as a, as a, as a company or an engineer department, you develop, but it's a, it's a, a, it's a proven component. Um, it does exactly what it's supposed to do in terms of design intent, and it very, very rarely changes. Okay, and then conversely to that, you have dynamic files. And these are things, these are files that could potentially change. And, and because the fact that they change, they need to be, they need to be looked at a very special way. You have to understand, well, how do they change? In what condition do they change? Uh, uh, to what extent do they change? And how might that impact other files that are associated to it if they do change? Now, sometimes uh, uh, an example of a dynamic file could be um, something that has some sort of range of motion. What if you have a hydraulic cylinder and you want it in your design and you want to be able to express that motion of that hydraulic cylinder? Um, that's one example of dynamic files. Another example is what about a file that you want to use um, and you don't know what its configuration is going to be because it's dependent upon other files that are in your, in your design. So depending on the other files that are in your design, you may have a file that needs to uh, change in size or shape to accommodate those other files that are in, my, in your design. Now, you can handle that a number of different ways. Uh, you can handle it by having templates available that are configured in such a way where you have parameters that allow you to uh, change the dimensions of different geometry within that file. Um, they could be files that uh, as you create them, you want to create them and now they become a static file. And so you wanna make sure that they have a very unique file name. So that way later on, if you need to consume it, you can find that file because of its file name. So coming up with a file naming convention, something that is robust and logical. Um, some companies uh, I've seen use a very uh, uh, intelligent file name, if you will, where every character within the file name represents some sort of aspect or attribute about the file. That's one way you can do it. Another way is you can just use a random or a sequential numbering system. Um, because of the fact that there are data management systems out there where we can understand files, not solely on their file name, but maybe other properties are about those files, um, maybe a, a, a random or a sequential numbering 
file naming convention would satisfy the needs of making sure that files have a unique file name, because ultimately that's what we want to have. We want to ensure that there's no confusion as to what files we need to access. No duplicate files in separate folders. We want to make sure that the information in which we want to access is very specific and very unique for what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, d dynamic files could also be managed by uh, creating a very specific directory structure. Maybe we want to be able to find files based upon their file path. As we all know, when we work with assemblies, assemblies inside of Inventor have file references. So some of the key, two key aspects about being able to resolve those file references is of course, file name, and then of course, file location. So we have to be cognizant of what files do we need to consume? What are their names? And then of course, where are they located and how can I access them? Because without having that, you know, it's gonna be a little challenging to make a, 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 a design configure it or work the way that we want it to work. And then of course, dynamic files, what about the level of detail? And now, what I mean by level of detail isn't what we are used to in with level of detail inside of our assembly files, but I'm talking about to what extent do we need to represent our geometry? Uh, as an example, maybe uh, within our design configurator, we don't need a fully detailed component with all the fillets and all the chamfers and all the holes in it. Maybe we need just a representation of that component in our design. Maybe it's something more or no, nothing more than just having a footprint of its size or a bolt pattern of how it uh, affixes itself to something else. You know, maybe we don't have to have that full level of detail. The more time or the more detail we have within our components, the more time it takes to develop them. So if there's a time constraint involved, maybe uh, you know, putting a little focus on how much detail we need to involve with our components. Um, so that's always something to keep in mind. 